Stan Jibalisco here with episode number three in the logarithms primer, otherwise known as logarithms in a nutshell. I'd like to illustrate a property that all logarithms have, whether base 10 or any other base. Of course, I recommend that you watch the first two installments of this series on logarithms before you watch this one. Logarithm refers to the, generally when you see it written log like that, it means the base 10 or common logarithm. The logarithm of a product of any two numbers, as long as that product is positive, equals the logarithm of the one number plus the logarithm of the other. And both of these numbers must be positive real numbers. Remember, the logarithm of zero is not defined and the logarithm of any negative number is not defined, at least not in the set of real numbers, and that's what we are confiding ourselves to here, the set of real numbers. If you get into complex numbers, things might get a little different, but we're not going to go there. So, remember, you can take the logarithm of a product of two numbers, it's the sum of their logarithms. You might ask, okay, well that's cool. Why is that? How does that come about? Well, from your algebra, remember that if you have a power of 10 to a product of two numbers, like that, 10 to the power of x times y, Pardon me, I'm getting myself mixed up. If you have 10 to the x times 10 to the y, or x and y are real numbers, then you have 10 to the x plus y. In other words, the product of powers of the same number is equal to that number raised to the sum of the exponents. For example, 10 squared times 10 cubed equals 10 to the fifth, which we can write as 100 times 1,000 equals 100,000. 10 squared times 10 cubed equals 10 to the fifth. This particular formula also works for negative exponents and it will work for fractional or even irrational number exponents. Well, how does that come about? 2 plus 3 the rule for logarithms derives from this. Remember, a logarithm is an exponent or a power of 10. So, it reflects right from that particular scenario. The logarithm of 2 times 3 equals the logarithm of 2 plus the logarithm of 3. You can think of it like that. That's where that rule derives from. So, for example, suppose that you have the logarithm of 10. Then you, then you also, you want to multiply this 10 by 1,000, let's just say. Well, let's use the original numbers that I had bef before. 100 times 1,000. Now, the logarithm of the quantity 100 times 1,000. That is the logarithm of 100 
thousand. And that's five because ten to the fifth equals a hundred thousand. Stick that in our little memory bank down there. Okay. The logarithm of 100 plus the logarithm of 1,000. Well, the logarithm of 100 is 2. Because 10 to the second power, or squared, equals 100. Plus the logarithm of 1,000 is 3. Because 10 cubed, or 10 to the third power, equals a thousand. That's five. Check with our memory bank down there. Same thing. That'll always work. So once again, here is the general formula for any two positive real numbers, x and y. You can write that, uh, by the way, for any x and for any y. Now we're going into logic. For all x and for all y, if x is an element of the set of positive real numbers and y is an element of the set of positive real numbers, then log x y equals log x plus log y. Don't you love that? Doesn't that, if you're a pure mathematician or if you're into Greek and worse, you ought to just love that. You may have learned that if you had any theoretical math, and if you haven't, and if you're interested, I recommend it. It's, it's quite fascinating as an art form in itself, and the, the field is still open for new discoveries, and it's a universe apart from this mundane, stupid world. Better than drugs, for all X, and for all y, if x is a positive real number and y is a positive real number, then the logarithm of x times y equals the logarithm of x plus the logarithm of y. Stan Jibalisco, out until next time.